crazy. In the air. You heard? Let's go, man. Free game Friday. Yeah. Not Friday, just free game because nah, we get game married day. That motherfucker echoing like a motherfucker. You know oh. what I could do? I could connect my phone. To you think they hear the echo? Yeah, they're saying echo. <laughs> we finna say forget the stream. Check, oh check, God, check. So check, check, check. I so what's actually going on, you yeah? Okay. I fixed it. I don't know. It fixed it? I can still it? hear an echo. Because you can't turn the audio down all the way on the phones when you're live. Correct. So only one of those can be out loud and it's his phone. You know what? Mine Text is Mike playing. G, ask him, to, ask him to, to get a quarter inch to male XLR. But I fixed it. Does it fix it if I just wasn't live on my phone? Yeah, but it's okay. I think I fixed it. Mine is coming from my headphones now, which is why they're right you there. You can see it on your phone? Yeah. Like the questions and shit? Yeah. Because if I need to just not be live on my phone. I fixed it. Does it fix it if I just wasn't live on my phone? We in there. We in there. Yeah. yeah. Let's go, yeah. man. Yeah, man. Nah, it's good. If we, we got to do anything else from with From the this 707, live. we got D1 outside. <laughs> we in this yeah. thing, man. Come yeah. on, man. I pulled up on my dog. Yeah. This is the opportunity. If y'all got any questions for myself, Tieta, D1. Yeah. We just be kind of going through the flow. This is our fourth episode this week. We've been on the roll. If you on in that me. even community, it's been a lot of new shit dropping. Mm. On me. You heard? Yes, mm. sir. Mm. What, what, what brought you to the Bay? I had a show today at uh, University of the Pacific. Yeah. Oh, yeah. now UOP. Pulled up on them at UOP. Had yeah. to do my thing out on the lawn. It was an outdoor show. You feel yeah. me? So that mother was like, I had the same outfit on y'all see right now. So I was burning up. You feel me? <laughs> burning oh, up. Oh, yeah. You was tripping. Yeah, but... Killed that thing, Man, you know. That show we did in Chicago was hot Ooh. and humid. You know, oh, like yeah. we we really like these past few years, we knew the traveling, so we still finding out new weather. Like this T Pain tour, Florida was <laughs> well, what, no, heat. no, North Carolina was the maniest weather. We got there and it was hotter than life. Like you had to be <laughs> indoors. It didn't make no yeah. sense. And then by the end of the night, it was storming and we had to perform in the rain. What? It was like, what? Yeah, welcome to the South. They almost canceled yeah. the show because it was storming. Welcome welcome to the South, yo. Come on. That's all I can tell you. Come to New Orleans and the heat is one thing, but y'all familiar with humidity? Mm-mm. Humidity is the thing to it. See, y'all got, y'all got dry heat out here, out, out west, right? Mm-hmm. It'll be hot, but you'll be like, damn, I'm not west. really sweating. Right. Down South? That shit hug you. Boy, oh God! Boy, you will be sweating. You gonna like you gonna sweat so much from the humidity that it'd be like the heat is cool, but it's the humidity that's killing me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I it's think crazy. where were we in? Uh, was it New Orleans or was it DC when we came outside and it was like ninety degrees and raining? Yep, yep. it was like that. Sound about nah. that. Sound about right. We gonna, we gonna get to the biz. I've been I've been seeing you all over socials, <sighs> man. All over socials, and it feel. Organic. It's seldom that I see you uh, on platforms unless, like, the platform trying to be messy, you know, mm, which, is, which is like a current mm, state of hip hop. Mm. But it, it feel like a really genuine, organic run. Like, mm-hmm. how you, how have you been spreading your art? Yeah. So I, I made a vow to myself and to God and to my middle school students. I used to be a middle school teacher. Mm. And I made a vow to myself, God, and my middle school students before I stopped teaching. Like, look... I'm going to get in this rap game and I'm going to speak the truth from the realest place inside my soul, right? Mm. I'm going to use all the creativity I have because I see that the hip hop industry is what's controlling the definition of cool. And that's where all influence is being shaped at. So I made that vow over a decade ago, bro. And I've been winning ever since, you know, social media made the the world a lot smaller. So now people could see you winning, even though you might have been winning, you know what I mean? And when you talk about social media, bro, this is so dope because I feel like people are looking at like two of like the 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 forerunners of social like this pioneers. new movement. Yeah. <laughs> and bro, you talked about organic. I've never spent like this whole year has been life changing for me. All my numbers have like doubled and tripled. I ain't spent a dollar on ads or nothing yet. Mm. So imagine when I imagine when I take it to that level, which is like starting Monday. You hear me? Right. When I be like, let's start doing business now. You feel me? You feel me? So it's just been amazing. I've been experiencing, wow. yeah, elevation so, and condemnation at so the same all of time. This has just been coming from um, 
really word of mouth. I see you on platforms often where, where mm-hmm. I feel like you do really dope. You're really reactionary to what's happening in the culture, in the state. Mm-hmm. Or even if a nigga say something, you you get on. Oh, hey, yeah. Let me adjust. Yeah. You know me? yeah. And, and I feel like that helped it spread. And it's a really organic approach versus like seeding. You know, like we we got in, you know, like the industry uses seeding networks, and you get to this point where you can seed, and it's just like a I've gotten to this point where it's like, you can't pay niggas to post you. Mm. Mm. Like, cause explain it, explain it. Right. Like a seeding network, right? You can pay people to academics, HEs, all of this. That's how we get so much like filth in the culture because you could just pay. If mm-hmm. I got a new nigga that I think is tight, I can spend my money and pay to get him in front of everybody, right? Mm-hmm. But the problem with that is like, everyone isn't deserving of those spots. So to get convoluted, and what it does too is like you paying the same niggas to post you who's gonna build you up early and then soon as like you like an ice spice and you lose weight, they're gonna be talking bad about you. Straight up. Or old. if you they, stop yeah. selling tickets, they're gonna be talking bad about you. And these the same people that you put tens of thousand dollars in their pockets, but it's like you can't pay people to support you. It's like buying friends. Say, brother, rest in peace to Rich Homie Quine. Some of the same outlets that was like, man, he gone too soon. I seen them people clowning him months ago mm-hmm. and saying how he fell off. Mm-hmm. Some of them same hypocritical outlets, man. These people not your friends. You feel me? Yeah. Like when it comes to this whole uh, media side of the industry, I call it th- the three C's. We got creators, consumers, and commissioners, right? The commissioners, the labels, the media people, they're not your friends 99% of the time because <laughs> you're not even valuable to them unless you can equal views and clicks, mm-hmm. right? And once you realize that, it's like, do I want to prostitute my integrity just to get in their good graces temporarily? Or is it like, man, whether they rocking with me or not, I'm standing on all 10 and here's how I feel. They don't have good graces. <laughs> Mm. Mm. <laughs> they don't, that's what you're not going to no do good mm. There is no good graces to, And that's what people don't understand mm. Within this game yeah. You know, Everything is paid and manufactured I got like a homie I'll be telling Just building how like play, Everything is paid everything. more and manufactured everything. And people don't understand that Even as an independent like We had to go through the process of doing seeding And playlist promotion mm. And YouTube ad companies to realize Like oh no that's not what I want for right. my shit yep. You feel me yeah. But the industry utilizes it Because they figured out a, a, a medium that works But it's like that shit ain't it Like even when you go in these spaces Like when my freestyles go viral And they let no academics and say cheese and all that shit I be wanting that shit pulled down Because I go look in the comments And it's such a nasty space That they, they curate yeah. it with their base there, there you That you can't even throw positivity in there Without it being like Convoluted mm. by maggots <laughs> Bro, you, The one with the um, With the little boy The, the little, autistic child They was hating in the comments about that It's, it's like, like hating bro, on they, it. Man it was weird It's Niggas a child weird, yeah. you feel me? It's a child but the, the culture has built up and allowed that to exist. Like we're almost, we like negativity is our natural state now. Yeah, it's absolutely. very, very right? interesting. Like, That's you know, why people like love you so much and champion you as like the positive guy. It's like, no, I'm just being normal. You niggas just yo, hate on Yo, yo, in 2024, <laughs> right. common sense is controversial. Mm. Ain't that something? Many. Ain't that crazy? I'd be like, yo, I'm really not that extreme with anything not I'm saying. All. I'm just saying it's not right to be glorifying killing ourselves right. and selling dope to our people and being and you know being disrespectful to women in, in the way it's like <laughs> and that's niggas all. be like, you a conscious nigga. Yeah, you a clout chaser. Oh, you right. you just try you yeah, bro. Right. It's crazy. So, you know, the old regime is falling, man. The empire mm-hmm. is falling. Um, and it's beautiful to witness. It's beautiful to witness because here, here we are being ourselves. And when you be in yourself, you know that, man, what I have built is going to last because I have connected with people's hearts. Mm. You know what I mean? When you connect with your art and your heart, when it's like, wait, wait, wait. I love what D1 and La Russell be spitting because they spitting straight heat. But... I love their heart and what they represent. Mm-hmm. That hit you different. Got a fan forever. That hit different. That, that's why I'm able to stay home and do shows all year. Man. I got recurring people. Yeah. You know, I got I see the same 100, 200 people yeah. every month because yeah. it's like we're going to support you to the end. It's it's going to be hard. You know, it's funny we we were saying with like, you know, all the controversy that's going on right now in the industry with certain niggas, you don't see nobody defending them. 
Nope. And that shows you like their character and what they about. Because if something came out about La Russell, you'll see a whole bunch of niggas jump off the boat like, nah, nigga. Straight up. That's not, <laughs> not all niggas. Straight up. You feel me? But Straight up. you don't see that with a lot of people that go underwater because that character isn't the same. Man, people people scared right now because they know that they might be going down <laughs> with with every, everything else that's happening right now. Cause cause bro. How 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 lame is that? How bad is that to have known that this was going on for 20 some odd years and to be like, well, I'm just not gonna say nothing if nobody else saying nothing. I ain't gonna be the first one to say something. How lame is that, bro? Amen. I don't look up to none of these people. You heard me? Amen. None of these moguls, none of these rappers. I don't look up to none of these people at this point. And you know, some shit is very hard to miss. Like niggas who be like, oh, we did, we had no idea, be lying. Right. Yes. It's so hard to miss. Like, my first experience with a lot of people in this industry, when it only took was your last. 20, and it was my last. <laughs> because I, nigga, you be I dead walk straight like out. Ah, oh, nope. I already know what that oh, is. Me. So when you start mm. going back and you look at niggas who toasting and celebrating yep. in these pitches, like, it ain't no way you didn't know. Yep. And I and I could feel it. Mm. And I knew on my first instance, Come on, you man. know, it's a... It's a really interesting game, but we like really complicit. <laughs> what Dre say, niggas no snitches. They ride and they run with them. It's mm. all gravy as long as they don't tell on mm. them. Mm. You feel me? That's like, it's the same mm. shit. As long as it ain't happening, in fact, that them niggas be cool right. with it and complicit in the behavior, but real niggas not. Like my homie can't come around me and he be on some, you know. Straight up, straight <laughs> up. That's not straight the up. homie no more. Straight up, straight up. <laughs> I feel like that's like what's changing right now too. It's like niggas ain't just sitting by and being like, oh, well, since nobody else is saying saying nothing, I'm not going to say nothing. It's like, no, nah, we don't fuck with that. That ain't it. Mm. And that's just what it is instead of everybody being like, well. And that has to be okay. Like we need mm -hmm. to be able to say that and people not, you know what? People be afraid that, oh, you're not going to be my friend no more if I tell you about yourself. We got to get to the point to where it's right. like, you're if not I really got to be friend. quiet about some buffoonery and some illegal, like just immoral stuff going on to be your friend, your friendship ain't worth all that. Right. Your friendship ain't worth my silence. Mm. And, I, and I feel like that's fair. I had a um, session one time and I got a call on my way to the cell. I was telling somebody I'm finna go do this. And I got a call. And the call was like, hey, I don't know about bro. It's some shit, mm. you know? So when I got there the whole time, I couldn't even work yet. Cause it was like on my psych and I had to pull the nigga to the side. Like this, this, this. If this is what it is, <laughs> I can't. No you feel me? Right. Ain't no session. You feel me? Ain't no session. And, and right. being able to have that conversation was like, Beautiful, you know, because we got to leave on the grounds of like, nah, I, you know what I'm on and what mm -hmm. I'm about and what I stand for. Yeah. So it's no, it ain't no, we're not afraid to lose no friendships and walk away. I ain't got a problem walking away. I take two walks a day. <laughs> Straight up. Hey, in 2012, I turned down a deal with Cash Money. And that's my childhood idols coming from New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They flew me out to Miami. I had an opportunity. I'm sitting there in, in the hit factory where they record mm. at. And I'm sitting here like, man, this really happening, man. These boys yeah. is like courting me. Like, this crazy. <laughs> and then you start to be around the energy and the ambiance. And you just realizing, hey, no knock to y'all. This just ain't my speed, though. Mm. This ain't my speed, man. This ain't my vibe. This ain't my comfort zone. Like, creatively, I'm inspired. Like, this is all great. But I don't feel celebrated in this arena. I feel mm. I feel like an outcast, and I just feel like I'm being tolerated. You heard me? Uh. Man. So I turned that deal down, and I wasn't rich. I wasn't no millionaire at the time. I wasn't no person who had other deals on the table. I turned that down on the strength of my morals. You heard me? Mm. And... That's the type of stuff I look back on and be like, oh, I did that because that took crazy faith. Right. You know what I mean? And them the right. tough ones. Boy. Them the tough ones. I when remember you... <laughs> walking out that Rock Nation office in L.A. and it was like. That was a uh, real story? Oh, God. Because I, did, I didn't hear it. Well, I, I that was a real that story. Office, nigga, the count wasn't right yet. <laughs> 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 that count was not right yet. You feel me? But it's Damn. like, what you. In those situations, you really got to trust uh, yourself and, and what you believe in and what you think is right for you. Because some shit is just, if you go into the situation feeling unsettling, your entire experience while you're there going to be rough. Mm. It's going to be rough. Mm. That's, 
that's the best part about right now is people just starting to see that like, oh, the rap game is full of a bunch of cap, like a bunch of lying, a bunch of faking. And some people <laughs> and some people really don't be knowing that they really be oh like, God. yeah, like they really be thinking, they no, really this think how cats real. is really living. And this is really what they on. It's like, no, Man. the same people that's pushing that music to y'all. Don't let their own kids listen to that music. Right. Their kids go to private school and they right. live in a white gated community. But they steady glorifying the trenches. Man, if you go to some of these shows, these niggas who are like the biggest niggas within a certain niche and lane, and you go to these shows and you look into the crowd, and the crowd is like little white kids and Mexican and Filipino and Indian kids. And like that shit, when you look into an audience and it's not reflective of you and Mm -hmm. your values, Mm -hmm. you know something went wrong. Or you're a global product. But you should never be able to look into an audience and not see yourself reflected in it. Mm. That tell you, you been commodified. Yep. Like a nigga selling you like dope. And you don't even have any merit in where you're going. And Sheesh. these people aren't fans of you. Like they're, they're fans in a fandom sense. Like you're their entertainment, but they don't relate to you. They don't love you. It's not the you're same. You're a product. No, you're goosebumps. Goosebumps. you're not a human. You're a product. I got goose. But look, I'm gonna tell y'all, <laughs> man. I'm gonna tell y'all a story, man. Only because it's true. God bless the dead. To my man, uh, Coolio. Ain't Coolio from out here? Ain't Coolio from out here? Coolio G with the crazy hair. Yeah. I'm not sure if he's from. Ain't Coolio. Or not. I think he's from Cali though. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I did a show at a college. This early in my career. Early. We talking about early 2010s. I had just stopped being a middle school teacher. I do a show at a college and it's a white fraternity that booked D1 and Coolio, right? <laughs> Weird combination, right? We get to the show, bunch of white frat boys. They just drank and they super drunk. It broke my heart, dog, to see that they only booked Coolio to laugh at him and make fun of him, oh. to get him drunk, to play with his hair, to serve him fried chicken, you heard me, while we, while we backstage, and to sit there and just crack jokes. And it was like, this is wild. Like, I'm watching my man who I grew up listening to Gangsta's Paradise in one, two, three, four. And I'm like, wow, that's Coolio. The same way I'm like, wow, that's Coolio as a man. They're like, wow, that's Coolio as it's a, a caricature to As them. a caricature. Dog. And that's what these niggas is today, and they don't even know it. Like, You know, I'm an artist who I have a real base, so I know the difference. And I go into these crowds and I feel the difference in energy between someone who loves and supports you Mm -hmm. and somebody who sees you as a thing. Like, I dropped in the crowd one time, this white lady grabbed my ass. And I was, you know, in my audience, Mm -hmm. that'll never occur. Mm -mm. Because niggas love me and respect me and have a certain level Mm -hmm. of that for me because they know me. Mm -hmm. But when you see somebody as just a thing, you think you can have you do whatever Mm -hmm. you want, you entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I had to stop the show. Like, you feel me? No. Because if it was the opposite end and and a woman out there and a nigga, you feel me? It's like that that shit off. But it's like that type of shit, to her, that was light. (laughs) <laughs> you yeah, correct, because, correct. Because mm-hmm. you're entertainment. Yeah. You're a caricature yeah. for them. You they nigga for the day. Yeah. And you feel me? That shit, it, it don't be right. And when you start to see it at the massive level, when you look out into them crowds, like, man, we, when we did the T-Pain tour, the first few shows, I was having a hard time because it was like so many white people. It was a culture shock for me. Mm-hmm. Like, going into it, we was like, oh, no, we got the same base. We finna be with it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't. And it was a culture shock for me. Like, it threw me off. And, you know, I'm coming out African nigga in a European whip. Like, it, you got to really adjust to that because it's such a, a different experience that you have. You no longer, it take the human out of it sometimes. Mm-hmm. My experience with that was I went on tour and opened up for Macklemore. Right? <laughs> Same experience, dog. Yeah. With nationwide tour. This one, Macklemore was the hottest rapper in the game when he had Thrift Shop, mm-hmm. had Can't Hold Us. And I remember going and opening up. I'm direct support. So I'm opening up right before Macklemore. And I'm like, man, what I'm about to spit is not going to connect with these people. You hear me? And that feeling, oh, that feeling be hurting. You hear me? That feeling be hurting. Oh, God. So, so after that tour, man, I'm, I'm actually very glad we talking about this. Um, after that tour, I had made a lot of bread from that tour. 
And I just went around the whole United States of America. And I got back to the crib, pocket full of money, spirit feeling empty. Mm. You hear me? Did you change your set at all? Like after the first couple, was you like, I, I did. Gotta... Cause I was like, this yeah. can't keep going horrible. Hold on, I gotta switch something up. You hear me? Nigga yeah. <laughs> up there like making my way downtown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Yeah. So yeah, I switched, I switched the set up and I got that mug right. I got that mug right. But after the tour, I was like, I figured out how to make it work in front of them people, but I don't feel like none of them people really know who David is. You mm. heard me? Who know who, 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 like D1, like, but D1 is David. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, dang, I, I figured out something that worked for the tour and it worked well, but it hit different. And I got back to the crib and that's when I made a vow in New Orleans. You heard me? Right there in Gentilly. I remember my little studio house I had and I was like, yo, Everything I make moving forward, I'm going to be bold. Whatever mm-hmm. I am, I'm going to be level 10 with it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I'm going to stand on it. If I'm a man of God, if I'm a Christian, I'm proud of that. I ain't finna try to sugarcoat that. Yeah. But if I'm also somebody that was a middle school teacher and I'm like an activist and all that, I'm on that. But if I'm somebody who, whatever we talking about, if it's a love song, I'm, I'm on that. And... I want to be all the way that because you you're not even believable or convincing if you just like <laughs> softly represent something. Right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> Which is why I feel like some of these niggas go to the extreme because they understand that. Yep. You're not believable if you have steps. So That's nigga, facts. I'm gonna go all the way. I sold dope by the shipload. Right. You feel me? It's like you you can't have steps. Nigga Pablo in this Escobar. <laughs> right? You can't have steps. You gotta go all the way. And that's why we're we witness that extremity. Like when you hear some of these records, it just ain't no way you shot this many niggas. Mm-mm. Like it, it, it's intangible. Uh-uh. As a nigga who still lives in the hood every day and witnessing these experiences, it's like, it's right. intangible. Ain't nigga. that many people even dying in the hood. Like ain't that many people, I know the murder rate in my city. Ain't that many people died. Based it's on, intang- yeah. But it's become like a uh, trendy. And I get it, because when I was a young nigga, uh, Wayne was my favorite rapper. Me too, dog. And all I tried, all of my bars, nigga, I tried me to take too, every dog. Wayne bar and yes. make it witty. So I get it and I understand it. You feel me? We set in the trend. So, mm. you know, it's become less about this what I'm on and this just was cool to rap about. Yeah, yeah. And, bro, when I first started rapping, I was in college when I first started rapping. And I remember I was trying to be like Wayne when I first started rapping, yeah. straight up and down. And my mama heard my first mixtape. Right. And my first mixtape, I was killing about 85 people <laughs> over the course of five songs. I was oh selling dope, you know, about a ton. <laughs> I was doing all this. I was all this with <laughs> women, like yada, yada. And when my mama came in the room and it was a mixtape, it was a physical CD. And she was like, I ain't know you rap. And she held that mixtape up. My heart hit my toes, you heard me? Because I was like, man. She know the real you. You heard that? She know the real me. <laughs> like, man, and I, and I ain't want that feeling no more. So I, my mm. prayer was, if I ain't supposed to rap God, please let me know. But if I'm supposed to rap God, please let me blow. If I don't move a y'all, if I don't move a lot of units, I ain't stressing. If I don't sell here, I'm going platinum in heaven, you heard me? That was my first boss on my first project that ever hit streaming platforms. Yeah. Cause I was like, if this ain't meant for me, I don't want to become a caricature. I don't want people to book me just to make fun of me. I don't want people grabbing my booty in the crowd. Yeah. I don't want, and I don't want to have to fake about this life that I'm not living just to make it. So if it ain't for me, don't let this take off. But if it's for me, allow it to happen and yo, Look where we at, man. Right. Look where we at. As yourself. <laughs> As ourselves. And that's the most unbeatable feeling. Like, bro, when we be out in the world and I navigate, it's the most beautiful thing to just be outside as me. I go everywhere. Mm-hmm. I really go and I get embraced and loved everywhere I go because people see that mm-hmm. and they never meet a different version of me. Mm-hmm. I don't have to like... That be the shit that be tricky. Like, you know. <laughs> who I got to be today? Who I'm going to be around? Wait, that's going to dictate how, how gangster I got to be. Or oh, I'm finna be in the trenches. I got to turn it up. And some of these niggas who really, they navigate the game that way. You mm-hmm. know, when they in the office, they a certain way because mm-hmm. of their white superior. And when they talking and trying to convince this artist to sign, they a certain way because that's they demo. Mm-hmm. And then when they over here and they trying to convince it, you know, they a certain way like... They navigate depending on who they around. And that mm. shit um tricky. Mm. That shit tricky and it's uncomfortable. There's no way you shouldn't. That's just a tough way to live. 
Yo, it's a tough way to live. <laughs> it's a lot of people that's prostituting their passion for a green piece of paper, dog. Like they prostituting it, meaning like they know what their passion is, so they know the gift. They got the right gift, but they're using it for the wrong purpose. Mm. And it's all just to make some bread. Mm. You hear me? And that money don't even feel good after a while if it's like, man, who did I have to become to make this money? Damn. Uh, you know, I was just thinking that on the way here, we was talking about, because we went to see Nicki Minaj at the show. And I was like thinking she was probably tired from performing all the time, you know? And she does back-to-back shows. And I asked LaRussa, I'm like, you ever get tired of performing? And he was like, no, like, I don't do it that often. And he said, well, you know, on the T-Pain tour, it was kind of beating me down because it was back-to-back-to-back. And you're at that point performing. Because that's not your crowd. Those ain't your people. They don't support you and lift you up that way. That's the crowd you got your ass grabbed in. It's a whole different type of game. And I feel like that's why people end up like beat down and just like they become a whole different person. You go and you see them at shows and it's like, what the hell is this? Because they prostitute and they passion. It's like, what? Mm -hmm. This ain't real. This ain't filling you up. This ain't fulfilling you. You doing it for some paper. And then we go and see the show and, and we all disconnected. You, you're just performing. Man, you just performing. Uh, uh, that seems so mm-hmm. cheap at the end of the day. Like, mm. just performing. It's like, wait, if I don't get to be myself, like, no, it hits so different when I'm like, dang, I'm I'm finna wake up and be myself today and get paid to be myself. You heard? Ooh. Every day. <laughs> Every day. You what? know, I had, I had told myself that I no longer want to, like, I was like, I just want to get paid to be La Russell. I don't want to get paid to have to rap. I don't want to get paid to have to dance. I don't want to get paid to have to write. I want to get paid to be La Russell because every day I don't rap, but every day I wake up as myself. Mm. So if I could figure out how to monetize just being myself, Mm -hmm. I won. Mm -hmm. And that was my goal. And we got to the point to where it's like, I don't have a hit song. But you can go damn near to anyone and say La Russell, yep. and they know exactly who you're talking about. Yep. It's not many artists you could do that with. Yep. You would have to tell somebody the song. You'd have to sing yep. the song, and they'd be like, oh, I know that song. You don't know the artist, though. Yep. I don't have a song that you do that with people, but people know who the fuck I am. Dog, we got the same We got the yeah. same story, <laughs> dog. Like We got the same story. And sometimes when old people realize, like, you know, you'll be chilling somewhere and somebody come up and take a picture with you or people notice you. So then an old person that don't listen to rap, they yeah. come up to you and they be like, who, who are you? Are you? Right? you know what, I mean? what song you got? <laughs> and I'll be like, well, actually, I got a lot of songs. You might not know none of them, but the way this industry is set up now, people know my aura. You heard me? Mm. People know my spirit. People know my brand. And that's more than just them knowing a song. Yeah. What song you got? Don't minimize me to a song. I'm a whole movement out here. You heard right. me? Right. Straight right. up. That's how we coming, dog. Like you are, you are your biggest hit. You are your biggest hit. <laughs> dog. Say it three times. One more time. You, heard, you are your biggest hit. You are your biggest hit, man. So I'm I'm loving I'm loving this. The shift is happening. I constantly say that. I tell people a shift is happening right now because people are waking up. They seeing what's behind the curtain mm. for the first time. A lot of people are seeing what's behind the curtain, and they're like, "Oh, that's all." Like these people just these people just some insecure people that then got famous, mm-hmm. but they're really insecure, so they keep a bunch of yes men around them to just stroke their ego and, and boost their yeah. Uh, yeah. The fame. Is manufactured. Dig in on if that. everyone, on that. Yeah. if everyone had to get famous in the manner that me and you have, mm-hmm. they wouldn't be famous. Mm. If it wasn't paid for and manufactured and produced by a machine mm-hmm. and cultivated in our face, if a nigga didn't pay them ten thousand dollars a seed round seven times and make sure you seen it here, 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 mm-hmm. it wouldn't exist. Damn. You know, and I'm. Starting to learn because you'll start looking at numbers and it'll make you feel like your shit low and you realize your shit organic. Mm. Real strawberries don't grow that size. (laughs) Right. They're actually this size. And when I see fruit that size, that shit make me a little weary. Yeah. But in the game, you don't think that. You're like, damn, these niggas got 10 million streams. And I had to realize that just being in the world, it'd be certain niggas that... You would think is bigger than me numerically, but if we walk down the street Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we can go to the same city and walk down the street yeah. and niggas will walk right. right. We've had people walk right past us saying this nigga ain't Ooh, come to me, you feel right. me? But you can't tell that off numbers until you actually outside because everything is manufactured and we mm. drew this shit in the real way. Mm-hmm. If everybody had to go put seeds in the dirt and nurture it and water it to actually build their base and their brand, mm-hmm. everybody wouldn't be here. A lot of niggas wouldn't be hot right now. Uh, uh, man, <laughs> that should have be. It, it wouldn't exist. Yeah. And we know that. Like, we... Nigga, I've seen the decks, how they take somebody from inception to stardom. And it's not real. It's manufactured, which is why that shit go away so fast. That's why I appreciate it. Um, you know, organically, I'm posting content on IG and I posted this song I got called You a Star, right? And I post You a Star and it's going crazy. It's going viral online and people loving it, sharing yeah. it. And I see my dog, the Russell, hop in the comments, send me this. Yeah. 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 I was like, oh, really? I was like, man, <laughs> see. But ironically, the song is called You a Star because I want to get rid of this idea that people had in the past of what a star is. It's like, no, you a star. You a star. I'm a star for being who we are. You know what I'm saying? Because we think like, well, I ain't got I ain't got five million followers, so I ain't a star. You know what I mean? According to the standard. Or I ain't got this many monthly listeners. I ain't a star. But Sway told me this before. He was like, D, the type of artist you are, you can't measure your impact through streams. He was like, I never want you to sit here and look at how many streams you're getting and think, well, I'm not doing as good as these other people. Man, you out here changing lives and shifting a paradigm. You can't measure that with no freaking streams, man. With a stream? Not with a stream. (laughs) It's immeasurable. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Not by a stream. Right. Not at all. A Come stream that, that we're going to get paid one third of a penny for. You heard me? And a stream that at the end of the day, when people get it and they consume it, they really just be like, all right, on to the next. And when you realize some people only have streams. And the streams are digitally manufactured. Talk that about that. not even cause... real. Like when you, you know impact what's... a real person, that's real. When you, know you get a stream, crazy? you don't even know who it is or what it is that receives so it. So in 2019, um, I was like writing a bunch of songs and shit, had a few viral moments, content that we shot. I was uh, helping one of my best friends, Tessie, like with her shit. Right. We started running ads and everything. So I started really data diving right then, back then. I found a site called Chartmetric, right? So I'm data diving. I went to every artist that was breaking around that time, right? Every new artist that was coming through, I go look them up and I data dive and see where it started, like what was happening, how did this happen, what did it lead to? Mm-hmm. And you go into like the playlisting portal for Spotify because I would see what playlist they own so I could reach out to those playlists and try to get my shit, right? Mm-hmm. And every artist that they was breaking during that time, especially artists coming from like Alamo and mm-hmm. a bunch mm-hmm. of like mm-hmm. Alamo was one of the big ones though. And you go mm-hmm. look at these playlisting companies, right, that they were on and all of the playlists that they was landing on, you could pay. One thing, that's payola, okay. right? You can yes, literally sir. reach out, submit your song, and pay. Same playlist. And then I start finding playlists where an artist would be on the playlist for about 28 days, and then the playlist would disappear. But the streams remain there. The whole playlist would disappear? The whole mm. playlist would disappear. Wow. After 28 days, you get all these streams rack up, the playlist would disappear. So I was, I was data diving into every artist that was breaking. Like, it was blowing my mind. I'm like, what the fuck? It's happening, right? Mm-hmm. It's a whole system. Mm. <laughs> and it's companies that you could pay that do playlist promotion. And it's like, it's neither right nor wrong because it's marketing to mm. them. You feel mm-hmm. me? It's marketing. But the thing is, like, it was all an illusion to create a reality. Mm. You feel me? After you do so many things on a fake end, mm-hmm. niggas start buying into it because it looked like it's real. Mm-hmm. And eventually it becomes real. Like if every every time a nigga seen you, we like, oh no, D1 the biggest in the world and this day and the numbers this. We're just telling them this. Mm-hmm. That's why they use data now to try to define greatness. They just tell you how many streams a nigga doing mm-hmm. instead of having you use your ears and be like, is this good? Mm-hmm. They just tell you, oh, it did 10, 20, 30 million streams. Right. Mm-hmm. Fuck or, does that mean? Or how yeah. they'll, how they'll, <laughs> how the they'll do that mean? How they'll put the one song that a nigga had that went viral on yep. an album and then be like, album did 10 oh, million streams. Oh, album did no, but album did First no. week, 10 oh, million streams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, nigga, man. Yeah. That one song got oh, 10 man. million streams. Yeah, that's that album got five. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's so many um, ways to play the system. 
And I've been learning as I grow because every now and then I get into these states where I'm like, man, I should be bigger than I am. What's happening? And then I realize like, oh, everybody cheating. Right. Mm. I remember one of my first when I first started kind of getting on, getting bookings, I was talking to someone and uh he wanted to start doing show. He all the new niggas that break, they start doing shows to him. And he a cool ass nigga. Mm. But we was gonna do a show in Nevada. And uh, I think the the venue cap was probably like 800 or something. I think I sold like 600 tickets. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you want me to uh, make it look good? And I was like, what you mean? <laughs> and he was like, you know, like like we do for the artists. Wow. And make I was like, what good. you mean? And he was like, well, you know, if the room ain't packed, we do this, 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 and we'll do this to make. And I was like, wow. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> like all of it, all of it. Is manufactured in a sense to mm -hmm. make someone look mm -hmm. larger than life. Larger than life. And some of them will become it because it worked. But that's the thing with seeding. That's why mm -hmm. niggas are pay 10000 to have act posted, say cheese posted, rap is religion posted, mm -hmm. spiritual word posted. Because if all of them is sharing it, it makes it feel like, oh, this nigga is really blowing up. But it's like, I mean, I paid them to do it. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. And like I said, yeah. if that didn't exist, if you wasn't able to do that 10, th 10 times with $100,000, would that shit blow up? Probably fucking not. Who was we talking to when he was like, I called my manager because I had got the number one spot and he was hella Richie excited Rich. and his manager was like, I know, I paid for it. I paid for it. And he was genuinely <sighs> hyped though, thinking genuinely like, man, excited. we did it. We did it. We did it. We got number one. Because he worked his whole life to make it. And that nigga said, I already know. I bought it. Oh, oh my goodness, yo, bro! I got a nigga. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness, how, how real to keep it? I, how hey, real to keep it? Nigga, right. I got a nigga who hit me at least once or twice every one or two months and be like, "Hey, these is packages we got," and he'd be like, "Hey, it's funny." This nigga texted me the other day, like he was like, "Bro, we got billboard charting, we got YouTube, we got mm -hmm. this." I responded, I said, "Black men don't cheat." <laughs> and niggas start laughing. You feel me? And I yeah. every time I keep telling them, I'm like, bro, I just got to do it organically. You feel me? I said, yeah. as long as I know I'm going to get there, I'm not worried about how fast I get there. And every time he's like, bro, you're too good not to be the biggest. Mm. This is what they all doing. They pay me to do it. Let me do it. Wow. And I'm like, nigga, no. <laughs> wow. You just feel period. Me? Yeah. But this is like shit that everybody know what's happening and is going on and you don't believe in it until you actually in it and niggas just yeah. like I can make that shit shake and look good yeah mm -hmm. so so we all got a little bit of that in us you know some of us have it more than others but we all got that part that wants that 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 dope gratification from the industry so I wanted to chart Hell on yeah. Billboard before and Hell then I yeah. charted top 10 on Billboard right mm -hmm. with one of my albums and I was like did you pay for it? I didn't dog I wouldn't lie to you I didn't pay for it right so when I did that, shot it on Billboard, I was like, oh, that's all it is? Like, mm. it's just like, okay, like, right. now what? Changed and your life. That's it. <laughs> right, whole life different now, huh? Ain't nothing right. different. Right. Bank account the same, you heard right. me? Fan base the same. Dish is still right. dirty right. in the kitchen, right. you heard me? Updated his bio, Billboard chart. <laughs> right. Billboard yeah, top yeah. 10. <laughs> all that. So did that type of stuff. Wanted to do like the, yo, when my album dropped, like on iTunes, debuting, you know, how high can I debut on iTunes? This last album I put out, uh, Loaded, with, with you a star on it. Uh, not the version with you, though. Debut number two in the world on the hip hop charts behind Eminem. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay. But that means more to other people than it does to me. Right. Like, all these things, I find myself sometimes... Wanting to be like, Man. what does it feel like? Yeah, Them to have external pursuits. Yeah, mm -hmm. bro. I, I get caught every. I'll be going, running, 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 and then that shit it just hit me out of nowhere, and I'll be starting to seek validation, and there I'm like, go. man, why am I not? Why is this? Why you know? Mm -hmm. I start looking at, and I have to remind myself, like, nigga, I live in a compound. Yeah, I was on my mama couch three years ago. Yeah. You feel me, like, yeah. nigga? It's niggas who know every nigga who's. Within hierarchy in the industry, know who the fuck I am from what I've been doing, right? Mm -hmm. And you got to remind yourself of who you are and where you are because that's an endless pursuit. It's yeah. no, there is no ceiling to external validation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it's just not, yeah. it's not even a worthy pursuit. You know, I got to a point where I'm like, bro, I'm not, 
paying. I'm not giving them niggas no money to post and talk about me. Them niggas is losers. Straight up. Like you, you for real, you got to get to that point because that Straight shit up. be like weird. You be seeking yeah. validation from niggas that you don't even want validation from in real life. Them I niggas yeah, yeah. With me. Yeah, like in no, real, yeah. real life. If you see that nigga in real life, you'll walk right niggas, past stop playing. Yeah. Stop. You don't get to determine if my shit hot or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you nigga, can't yeah. outrap me. Yeah. You couldn't even Bro, outrap but me. But it be like, it's a sin system that you get sucking into and you'll <laughs> start yeah. like, man, I just spent so much paper on marketing and promo because it's like, oh, this is what worked. This is how it go. This is how it flow in the industry. And it's like, mm. what are we doing? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what we're doing is looking for that <laughs> external validation. That's what we're doing. When you get to that point where, you, where you've experienced liberation from needing their validation, you won. That's when you've won. When it's like, I'm officially liberated from needing y'all to like me. I don't care if y'all follow me. I don't care if I'm on your platform. Right. I don't care if y'all think I'm dope or not. Because there are people who I value how their moral compass is set up. And people who I actually mm. feel like, that's a decent human being. They love me. You hear me? Yeah. Them people, they swear by yeah. me. You hear me? Them people that really ride for me. I don't care if a fake killer or fake old washed up drug dealer. <laughs> somebody who want to be the savannah. The streets. I don't care what y'all think, <laughs> right, and I don't right. care if these people who we call gatekeepers like me or not. Man, I don't go through gatekeepers. I go through God. I don't want to get through your gate. I don't oh. want. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to get through your gate. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what Michael Prince was saying the other day when he was like, "Nigga, I escaped the Matrix. I'm out it." I don't care what nobody think of me. I don't care what. I don't care how goofy y'all Boy, think I look. I escaped it. How you dancing and they'll be praising you, and then as soon as something happened, a nigga knocking you and saying you washed up and talking right. about how you fell. I had niggas, niggas. When we posted the juvie shit, niggas was like, "Damn, juvie fell off. He performing in backyards." It's like, nigga, you niggas is so wow. lost and misinformed. You ugly. Like, you couldn't understand if you, you were able to your understand. Trunk. You feel yeah. yeah. me? Yeah. But like I say, that's what's been like built through these platforms and it's cause these niggas building that energy that's not our energy that's not hip hop we not no negative hating ass niggas that's not hip hop that's it not it ain't cool but when you go on these not. platforms in the comments it's like where did all these niggas come from and who built this kind of energy yeah. you right. know who built that kind of energy yeah. a lame nigga in the basement yeah. who wasn't getting accepted by niggas in hip hop so they had to start creating their own Create crowd that. around yeah. it that agree with the stupid shit they yeah. put out and that's not it it ain't hip hop. One minute we rap, we gonna rap it on that. It's been another incredible Believe episode that. of Free Game, man. We got Believe D1 outside. Hey, hey, this, hey, this content is amazing. So look, <laughs> a, a month ago I just started my new podcast. It's called Flipping Tables with D1, right? Come on. And I was gonna be like, man, I wish I get my brother LaRusso on it. LaRusso was the first guest on the podcast, y'all. Let's this, go. This, this right here, Let's go. This, this right here, this content too crazy. This is gonna be a whole episode on oh, that too. And we finna share it with. We gonna call this one flipping tables with D one. This a less. joint. We just did a joint episode. We just did a joint episode. Cause that's how this independent <laughs> shit works. Let's go. Let's go. I don't wanna get through your gate. Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Oh yeah. me. Oh me. What? Fire. Oh.